The 1970s is probably my favorite era of watchmaking of all time. And honestly, it's probably the most important era of all time in all of watchmaking history. It was a time in history where watches really became something about being a fashion statement. Something where what you wore on your wrist told something about the individual. It wasn't just a tool anymore. Like in old times, watches like Rolex, Submariners, and pocket watches and things of that nature were something that were only to tell time. And some of those watches started going away. Why? Because we're starting about an era where quartz movements started making their huge introduction. They were taking the world by storm. They were much cheaper to produce. They were in some ways, sometimes even more accurate because you didn't have to worry about mechanical movement. They were battery operated, so you didn't have to worry about keeping them wound. And they were cool, it was digital. Back then, again, watches were just a tool. Well, you know, one of the companies and the company that gets attributed to changing things for the future is AP. Probably one of my favorite brands. And their full focus was to be a statement, to be something that was unattainable, something that would separate you from the rest, that would tell something about the individual. They released the Audemars Piguet Royal Oak. That watch, the one intention was to be the first sports model luxury watch, and it was supposed to cost 10 times more than the Rolex Submariner. Now, we know that at that time, there was a lot of other watchmakers who were building watches for a longer time, maybe had more success. Companies like Patek Philippe, who are even at that time known to be the godfather of all watchmaking, amongst others like Breguet, and brands of that nature, but Patek Philippe couldn't let AP in on all the fun. They had to disrupt it even further by not only making it 10 times more expensive than the Rolex Submariner, but their goal to be the most costliest, in their words, it was gonna be the costliest sports model watch ever. And in that time, the Nautilus was born. In the 70s and prior to that, Patek Philippe was known for creating some of the world's most beautiful dress watches. For instance, while this watch was not in the 70s, this is something more along the lines of what you would expect from a brand like Patek. A dress watch, something that had a lot of complication, that was meticulously and marvelously made, very intricate, and just beautiful, beautiful, beautiful timepieces. This is a 5270 that we have in stock. This is a platinum piece just for anybody interested. It's a beautiful piece that comes with Tiffany stamped papers. But let's go back to what this is all about. This is about the luxury sports model watch. And in 1974, Gerald Genta, who had just designed one of the most iconic watches of all time, the Royal Oak, decided to go to Paddock for another home run. He wanted to hit a grand slam this time. And so he sketched what would be the design for the Patek Nautilus, and he showed it to Patek. They loved the design and they went with it. And there, thus, the Nautilus was born. So right here, we're gonna go over one of the most sought after watches in the world, the Patek Philippe Nautilus 5990-1R. This is a full rose gold, secondary time zone flyback chronograph. And you have not only AM and PM indicators for where you're at, at home, but if you're traveling somewhere and you wanna know if it's AM or PM in that local time, you also have an indicator there. Whenever Gerald Gentis sketched the design for the Nautilus, it was something that was never seen before. It was supposed to resemble something of a porthole from a ship where it had these ears on the side where you could literally flip open the window or that porthole in the ship. And so he brought that design over into the Nautilus. And so if you notice on the sides of the Nautilus here, uh, the 5990 doesn't represent it as much as other models, but there's usually even what would look like a hinge on this side to represent where it opens. And so that's something that's really beautiful about this design. Not only is it that, but it's the introduction of the octagonal shape with the outward curved edges. It made such a beautiful design and it was just something that had not been done before. It's very Gerald Genta, as we can tell. He's a fan of octagonal shapes, but this was the first time it was done in a curved fashion rather than the very sharp dimensional way that the Royal Oak does it. The name Nautilus actually came, fun fact, from 20,000 Leagues of the Sea which was the name of the boat in that book. This particular watch comes with a blue dial 
And let's just go over some of the features that this watch has. Like I talked about before, you have the local AM and PM indicator here at the nine o'clock. And then you also have, let's say where you're at, where you're home, where you live, you would also have the AM PM indicator for that time zone. You, if you look at the center, you have a 60 minute counter for your chronograph, for the flyback chronograph. And then at 12 o'clock, you have your date function. And for that date, you can adjust that via a pusher on the side. And so you can take your stylus that comes with the watch and you would push the pusher here at the about two o'clock setting and you could set your date that's located at 12 o'clock on the dial. If you wanna know how to use the secondary time zone, there is a third hand there that would allow you to set your GMT time so that you can set that secondary time zone. Something really, really cool about this watch is that it's just an elegant, really nicely packed, put together watch that you get to wear and is super elegant. It's in rose gold. Again, this started off as a stainless steel variant with the original Nautilus and they just have dressed this up and turned this into what I would see as now a sports dress watch. This is something that you can dress up in a tux, something you can dress up with a suit. This is such a gentleman's watch. This is the equivalent of getting into your Aston Martin. You know, rather than just showing up in your loud, crazy SVJ Lamborghini, you're gonna show up in a refined James Bond Aston Martin and you're gonna be a gentleman in this watch and that's what i love about it even though it's a loud watch and it's super it definitely makes a statement and tells something about the individual there's this subtleness and there's this gentleman vibe that you get from the watch that doesn't overwhelm you you see it and you're just enamored by the beauty rather than like turned away because it's just so loud and in your face I love that about this piece. And honestly, this is probably one of my favorite watches of all time. For some of you who might not know what a flyback chronograph is, is there is a vertical clutch that is installed and there's a couple other intricate pieces that go into the chronograph that allow you to set the chronograph to start so you can start it like you see there. And most of the time, because of the way the movement is and it's not as complicated as this one, you would have to press the button and then reset the watch. Well, that makes it really inconvenient, especially if you're measuring some things where you really need to have it restart right there in that second. And so with these watches and the flyback chronograph, you can get it started, you can have it running. And as soon as you're ready to measure the next interval, you just reset it. What also makes a flyback chronograph really special and honestly nicer to own than just a regular chronograph is that because you have that vertical clutch, there's no problem with you using that main chronograph hand as a running second. So in this particular watch, because there is no running seconds anywhere else on the dial, it is really nice to be able to know that because it's a flyback chronograph, you can set that chronograph hand as a running seconds and it allows you to be extremely accurate with setting the seconds and setting the time. And so that's something that's really nice on this watch. This watch uh, features a case that is 40 and a half millimeters. I would say that this watch wears, for a lot of you Rolex wearers out there, if you ever had an opportunity to try on a Sky Dweller, this is probably very similarly sized to the Sky Dweller. Maybe not as, as tall, um, but it definitely has that commanding look. This is a watch that even though it's only 40 and a half millimeters and technically the Sky Dweller's 42, this has a commanding, commanding uh, aesthetic. It's kind of like the front of a Rolls Royce. It just has this flatness about it that just lets you know that it's next level. Like even like, I, I know it's almost contradicting what I said earlier, where it's got this gentlemanly kind of quiet luxury kind of aesthetic. But when you really like take it in as a whole, there is this commanding presence about it at the same time. It lets you know that it's something special. And I think that's what makes this really nice. Again, this is one of my favorite pieces. This does feature the new clasp style clasp on the old model. Models, there would be a flip lock and it was a little less secure. With these, uh, it's just a lot easier to remove that flip over clasp. Sometimes it would just get weird and bent and, and it would be hard. It would make it extremely difficult for day-to-day -day use because it was hard to remove. On this one, it still remains super secure, but with these double push uh, buttons on each side, it just makes it removing it a little bit easier for the end user and makes it just easier to use day to day. This is just a marvelous piece. You get that beautiful uh, 22 karat oscillating wheel in the back, that rotor. It's just a beautiful piece with a lot of dimension in the movement and uh, it's just something you can stare at all day. This watch features a Patek seal, which is Patek's now seal of approval, kind of like the Geneva seal used to be 
Patek is taking it to the next level where now they, Patek Seal not only is certifying the movement, but also the case. If the case has to be to a certain level of finish, you get that black fine reflective polish on all the screws, the edges of this movement. I mean, it's just a magnificent piece. And uh, I'm just very honored that we have it here in store. You know, a lot of times we get these watches and we have them pre-sold or they don't last long. And so just to be able to take some time to film something with this watch, I'm just really, really happy we got to do that. And this watch is available here at Wolven. We are asking $250,000 for it. And uh, if somebody like you is ready to move up in their world of collecting, I think this is the piece for you. That's my problem. It's like I wear all these things. Like I get a new one. Like I wear it in the pool. I wear it in the gym. I wear it if I have to dress up. I wear it like, <laughs> if I'm going to the gym. Like I wear it like, all the time. It's like I like, kind of burn myself out on them, right? You know what's funny? So I'll be home. You know, I'll be in my like shorts and loungewear and stuff. And my wife is like, "Can you go pick up butter from the store or something?" So I'll go and put on my watch to go to the store at 12 <laughs> o'clock at night. <laughs> so, like, I don't even need it. I do the same thing. <laughs> I, I'll be in like gym shorts and a t-shirt and like old shoes like i will go grab like, a nice watch yeah like, like, that doesn't make any sense. and it doesn't matter what it is it could be this brigade could be a patek it could be like, literally a tutor right? like, like yeah like just like i have to have, i feel weird. have to have a it's watch. like your wallet like you can't leave home without it no like at all like it feels like my arm doesn't feel right i don't I mean yeah I mean, you guys get it but like my wife's like yeah. you sound like an idiot it's like i don't know what to tell you like my <laughs> feel off <Yeah. laughs> man we can never keep these in stock. My dad's had that on fire. It might be older than a 2020. That's crazy. Yeah. The watch has been polished once already. I was with him um, like six months ago. He said, nah, take it, wear it, see if you like it. Nice. He kind of just smiled now. Pump dibs. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't wear it, so. Well, that's like my dad. He's got a bunch of watches. And he can get like a lot of them through the AD back home. Lives in a small town like me. His watch that he wears, like I remember like the watch that he will be buried in one day in a very long time, hopefully, right? But like, it's this generation, blue, black, oh, or yeah. a, a black, gold sub. And no joke, the crown on the bottom is completely gone, <laughs> literally gone. <laughs> it looks like a fake watch. The crown's no longer there. The dremel. Like, no way. Been, oh, a hundred times. <laughs> Dang. It's actually on a, um, a rubber bee strap right now. Oh, really? The bracelet was just so bad. <laughs> he was afraid it was actually going to like, get caught on something and break. Wow. <laughs> and that's just the watch that he wears all the time. That's just like, that's his beater watch. Yeah. He loves it. Hasn't been serviced in, I mean, Lord help me, probably 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> and it works perfect. And it's that's just crazy. Like, it's a testament to like, how well some of these watches are built. And that's he true. Just, he doesn't care. Yeah. That's mine. I, the very first like real watch I ever got was a gift from my parents. It's a, um, it's a 16, 610 black sub, all stainless. Oh, nice. And like, that's the same, like for me, it's like, it's got an aftermarket crystal in it because I broke the crystal in it one day. You like, still have it? Oh yeah. That's yeah. like the one that I, I, it was a gift from them. I wanted yeah. to sell that one. Like, yeah. It's like my first real one. Is that what got you into watches or? It is, yeah. Really? It is. My dad always had cool watches and like, I was always trying to steal his when I was young and not responsible enough to take and wear a nice watch. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, when I graduated college, they got me one. On the Sprite and on the Pepsi. I think the Pepsi's are already a good price, so I can't move on that one. Uh, 20 and a half on the Jube. Uh, Sprite 19.8. And you said the Mercedes hands you out too still. It's like a 22, uh, I like, so, I put it at 22. I missed, so like, the reason I keep, I'm hung up on 22 on that one because like I missed one. Yeah. The 22. Oh, you did? Yeah. Mercedes hands? Mm -hmm. What year? Like. 21. Oh, 21? Dude, that was a good price. Yeah. Yeah, because that one, at the 2022 I showed you was 24 and a half. At this price, I mean, I, Sky Teller would be cool if that does for like a good price, but it's like, I'd rather just buy the yacht too. That like... Yeah, honestly, between the Pepsi, the root beer, and the Sky Teller, I think those are really good deals. Yeah, that's, that's why like, I just look for a deal, right? Because it's just like, uh... But you've had this one the most recent, right? You've had this one the I most know, recent. I love that watch. Yeah. Like, I love that watch. Yeah. I wear it like, I think it looks good on my skin tone. Like, I wear it with everything. It's dressing yeah. up. It's and it has the gold you want. Yeah. And I guess I could. Right. I feel like so I, <laughs> I have a little guilt. Oh, I don't think I could do that. Probably in the, in the loop here, I'm thinking, but we'll see. Yeah.
let me know. I actually came to look at a root beer salt. Oh, really? <laughs> I don't know what, at least two of them from you guys? Yes. <laughs> I wanted the solid, but I'll settle with this. Maybe, one. I'm here shopping, so I don't know. <laughs> I'm just saying. That was a solid price. So. I'm just saying, I don't know. I haven't found any prices yet, so I have no that, clue. That was a good price, that, that one actually. I don't work here, so I, it's, it's a good price. That one's a, that one's a deal, so. Surprisingly not as expensive as you might think. What's not expensive on a you, you know sub twenty? Really? Like nineteen five? Yeah. I see that one. Yeah, for you we do nineteen. I don't like five. the rubber button pushers. I like the vampire has the ceramic. Yeah. Not, and you get bracelets. Well, not, well, like, well, like, not like, all the vampires have ceramic. I like these pushers. Yeah. That's the newer model. How'd you hear about us? My yeah. brother bought two watches here maybe last week or two ago. Oh, very stuff. cool. So yeah, take a look. Awesome. Who's, who, uh, who's your brother? Josh. Josh. Uh, he bought a solid gold Yacht Master and a solid gold Daytona, just something similar to that. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, awesome. So he told me about you guys, so I figured I'll stop Josh doing Josh and his son? Josh and his father. Josh and his father. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uncle yeah. Phil. Yeah, he's the, one that bought yeah. Yeah. He, he, he's, he's, he's the one that bought Yacht Master yeah. 2, right? Okay, yeah. perfect, pretty cool, right? This one's still very, very clean, by the way. Yeah, we, we, we just bought it. Yeah, that's what I was actually doing over there. Oh, was it really? Yeah. We're here today to look for a Submariner, that's what I need. Okay, uh, in gold, steel? Steel. Okay. Steel? So I have... Submariner, I'm looking for hopefully uh, ceramic bezel. Yeah, so I have ceramic bezels here. I have ceramic. Aluminum, and then let me see. This one is a 41 millimeter, so that's the newest model. I also have Starbucks, and I have Hulk. So basically, all the variations you can get. I'm looking for something a little more plain for him. It's for my son. This one's also 41. This is a GMT. I don't know if you like GMT. This is black dial. I also have two tone older style. So this is kind of what I'm liking here. Uh, oh, so the one you have is this one. Uh, Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. GMT Black Bell. Yep. Um, so, are these full sets or? Uh, they should be. Um, this one, since it's older, I'm not sure. I can double check for you. These three definitely are. That's a GMT. This one is also a Submariner, but this is a rare collector's one. So this is like above twenty thousand. Oh, because of the bezel. Um, so a few things. They discontinued this one in two thousand nine. They changed the way the serial number was laid out, mm -hmm. and they started doing randomized serials. Mm -hmm. This one has a random serial, which it shouldn't have. Uh, oh, I see. And also, this is supposed to have papers, but it doesn't have papers. It has a card. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like a crazy transitional piece uh, yeah, where so it has all the bells and whistles that it shouldn't have had. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Kind of just caught in the middle. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, may I have a price on, on both of these, please? Yes, on these two? Sure. Maybe I'll trade in okay. something. Yeah. yeah. That one. So this is not so much your flair? No. Not okay. Me. Uh, this one, I don't believe I have the card for it. Okay. I don't so. Think I do. So let's say no card. So this is an M serial. Do you have any more links for it? No. No? Okay. So this one's minus one link. So let's see. This one. And this one is 12,000. And this one has a date 55W0. Five, five, this one is thirteen seven fifty. Okay. 13. With the date. And then it's aluminum. Aluminum is. Hey, um, the sixteen six ten is not on the system. How much is that one? Ten. Okay. This one's ten. I wanted ceramic, but aluminum is more in the price range on what I want to spend. Okay. Do you not have another aluminum that's cleaner? Um. So as far as Submariner, I don't. Other than that one, but that one's more expensive. I can polish it. So. The bezel, there's not much on the bezel. There's one mark right here. Mm -hmm. um, as far as the rest of the watch, I can make it look brand new. I really didn't want the uh, aluminum though. Yeah. And my watch. It guy, will scratch versus this won't yeah. scratch. My this one's 12. Is, is out for a while and I needed it on the third. Oh, December. really? His birthday's in a couple of days and my watch guy's out in 750. Yeah. This is the nicer watch. This is the watch. Yeah. But in my opinion, I think I can get it cheaper from my guy, something like this. Both of these are going to be more durable for sure. Not to say this is not durable, but the aluminum will scratch if he's not careful. Oh, he's not careful. So I'm thinking of getting him a bulkier watch, somewhat on the lower end, I guess. Not really, it's not low end. Yeah. You can spend 10000 on a watch. Or you could do like something like that, a day just. I think he wants something more sporty, and his hand is bigger than mine. Oh, is it? Okay. On, let me put this one on. He don't fit in that watch. Yeah. Yeah, this will this should fit him. And this is no box of paper? Um, I don't know. 
Oh, it's okay. We could find that when we get there. Or if it's just okay. a text, then it's up to you. I mean, it's just a quick call, honestly. Hey, uh, the 16610, is it box and papers or is it naked? No, it has papers. It's a uh, 2000, I can't remember if it's 7 or 8, but it has the warranty card as well. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's a good set for 10000 For the price range, let me just pull out a few that I think that are good for like the 10000 markish. If you'd just hear me out. So, Explorer. Is this a mil uh, Explorer? Explorer. This is the new 40 millimeter Explorer, and this is the 39 millimeter Explorer. This one's... Also in the price range, Datejust. Over the budget, but it's 11.5. That's the Milgauss. Or if you wanted fluted bezel, I believe this is like 12, which is the same price as the No Date Submariner. And then this one's 11 for the GMT. These are our options. These are the ones that I technically came for, which is in our price range. These don't. Some of them are less than you are less than 10. Some of them are are about 10 or a little bit more. The, uh, what was the ones that were under 10? It wasn't the Milgas, right? Under 10, no, not the Milgas. That's 11.5. This one's 10.5 for the date just. And then the date, 13.750, no date for 12. So this one's 10, 11. I think this one's 12. And then these three, I believe, are under 10. Like any of these? These two. This is what I had in mind. Well, this one. But this is same thing. It's this one's a little different. This one has a red GMT hand versus yours is green. This, I don't think he's gonna like any of these. He'll be all right with this one. He might like that one. That's a no. These ones, uh, I don't feel like spending 12.5. Uh, this ones are more about what we're gonna be able to get to. That one's dated like three days ago. And the 19 was my price too? Oh. Honestly, it was. Your customer. Honestly, the 19 was his price. <laughs> <laughs> but because he was here, I wasn't going to tell you a different price. Um, I was like, when he said it, I was like, oh, he's put this guy in a spot. Said, it's a good deal. Like, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Uh, we're asking 20 and a half for that one, but I told him 19. I guess if we can, let's figure out what we can do for mine if I wanted to trade that one in. Okay. I have no clue what the price <clears throat> was. Um, I turned down 15,000 when the market was high. Okay. Yeah, they're, much, they're much lower now. Probably. Much lower. So I'd pay eight. <laughs> I, so if I needed to source one for a client, I can buy them for about 84, 85. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if you were to trade, maybe I can give you a few hundred dollars more, but yeah. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna hold off on that for now. Okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna see, I'm gonna call my guy, and uh, if I can't come up with nothing cheaper, then, yeah. you know, from, my, I think from, from, what from I, here. In my opinion, <laughs> I think I can get it cheaper somewhere. Yeah. It's a good wash, though. It's clean. It's nice. This is probably the really best deal. For ceramic. That's sure. The, and that's giving me the aluminum. Other than that, I really like your, uh, like your collection. Thank you. Very, uh, very nice watches. Thank on, you. On this paddock right here. Yeah. I love that watch. That's what we specialize in, in trying to get stuff that you can't normally see anywhere else. And like I said, if I decide to just go ahead, because it's, I think it's a good price for aluminum. It's a nice watch, full set. So yeah. I don't think it's bad. I, I was just really hoping for ceramic at a cheaper price. Sure. So ceramic, so I'm getting I'm getting a ceramic one in, I think tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Submariner, it's a date. 2021, unworn, it's brand new. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what the guy told me, we'll see tomorrow. That one, I could do 12.5 if you wanted that one. And it's a date. That's what I'm asking, 13750. Mm. So that's a really good deal if and you were to get that one. Ceramic with no date, wasn't there that one? Uh, yes, that one's no date, that one's 12. And that one was 12. Yeah. I'll take a look. But in, I'll, and in the meantime, I'm definitely going to think about this one. This one ain't going to last long. Sure. All righty, friend, I appreciate you. Yeah, good to meet you. It was nice to meet you, sir. What was your name again? Barry. Barry, yeah. Andrew. Andrew, nice to meet you. Yes. Sir. I'll definitely nice to meet you. All right, sounds good. All right, guys, so this is a part of some of the day in the life that you maybe don't get to see and you still don't get to see the interaction I've had with this client, but it was a very, very pleasant, and uh, shall I say, it, it just it just became a moment where a vendor and a client became friends. However, he d doesn't really feel super comfortable on camera, so we're just gonna leave it out. But uh, I just wanted to touch on, uh, uh, you know, how important it is uh, to have uh, great customer service, and not only that, but you know, just how two good like-minded people can come together and have a full trust and full uh, confidence in one another. And that's clearly what happened today. We just got this uh, AP Offshore from him and uh, it is the AP Offshore Panda with the stainless steel bracelet on it. And if you ask me, it is very, very aesthetically pleasing. 
and also very ultra photogenic. This is one of my favorite configuration offshores that you can get. And now you can here at Wolven Luxury Timepieces, of course. And so this will be, of course, on the website here soon, but just wanted to kind of give a little bit of a highlight. Come get this watch. Day in the life of Wolven. Okay. actually was a new and return client at the same time because he came in about a month ago. I think he saw some social media, I forget if it was YouTube or Instagram specifically, but he couldn't believe basically the inventory that we have. Um, and so that day that he came in, he was looking at two watches that we had in stock and, and said, hey, I want to buy these two, what, what can we do? And so we worked out a deal and so the watches he bought was a 26240. ST uh, with the green dial, which is, oh my gosh, one of my favorite watches. And then on top of that, he bought a 116518LN with the, uh, some people call it the Pikachu dial, so it's like the champagne with the contrasting black dials, uh, sub dials rather. And so he bought those two and left that same day and he was very, very pleased. He said, hey, look, if you, if you keep your eye out on a 5726, let me know. And uh, I'd more than likely pull the trigger, so. I did exactly that. I had my eyes on this 5726 that he's considering. We're just kind of ironing out the details. And so uh, it seems like he's going to also take it. So that'll be basically three watches in one month and some really good pieces all at the same time. So we have a, we have a VIP client who bought a watch as a gift for somebody and uh, it was a rush order and it needs to be at a certain deadline. and. Uh, we cut it so close that now I'm actually going to deliver the watch. So luckily it's pretty close by, but uh, that's what we're doing right now. So let's go. Yo, beautiful watch, bro. So this is a bluesy we just got in. It's the 126. 613 LB and it's the sunburst blue with the white text on the dial. I love the two-tone. This watch looks sharp. I love the cleanliness on the on the white text on the dial. So the watch that we're delivering is uh, is is actually one that I like very much uh, and I wish had a little bit more popularity to it, but it's the Blueberry slash cookie monster. It is a full white gold submariner with the blue bezel black dial. It's a really good looking watch. Uh, a lot of people uh, come into the store looking for this watch and then they figure out that it's white gold and don't want to make the stretch. They end up finding the, getting like a James Cameron or a Batman. But this one honestly to me is, uh, it's the better looking one uh, versus the Batman. You do get like a black and blue on the bezel. This one you get all blue. And then the James Cameron, you get half of the blue on the dial. This one, again, you get all blue on the bezel, and then the bezel is honestly the place where you're gonna notice the color the most, more than the dial, uh, especially on the James Cameron, since it's like a two-tone from the black to the, to the blue. It's still very good looking, uh, but if you're wanting something that's Rolex and that's gonna show really blue, and you don't want something like this that's gonna have some gold in it, then you get the white gold and then the all blue bezel. It's a really good look. Uh, it's also a watch that's gonna fly under the radar to, uh, to most people. A lot of people will buy that watch to sit in meetings and uh, not stand out too much or be too flashy. And so that's what this watch is perfect for. It is white gold, but uh, it's a Submariner, so you can still kind of beat it up a little bit. I mean, it should you know, uh, but it can take that beating and that's always good to know, so. Oh my goodness, okay, hi, I'm Debbie. I'm Sam, how are you? Hi Sam, you're doing well. Okay, thank you so much for bringing us here. 
We had a crazy day today, so he's <laughs> no thrilled. Worries. Thank you. Thank you. Had a good night. So it went well. Uh, we were just on time, so that's good to know. Now headed back to the store, and it's closing time, so getting ready for the weekend. Hey, Josh. What's going on with the piano? Um, I think it's easier if I show you. So I had bought a piano for my family last year when we bought our house and kind of built up a good relationship with the sales guy. Um, he really likes watches and uh, just likes what we're doing. For some reason, he's just always kept in contact. He knows I'm always interested in possibly upgrading. Whenever we're buying the piano, uh, actually, one of the reasons I bought the house that I bought was when I walked in it, it had a grand piano. And uh, when I saw that, I was like, gosh, when I buy this house, I either have to buy the house with the piano, and I actually, I actually made an offer on the house uh, with the stipulation of let me keep the piano, um, but they decided they wanted to keep it because it was their daughter's. Um, they actually did counter, but it, the price just didn't make sense. And so I was like, nah, for that money, I'd rather buy a Steinway. It was like the one they had there was another brand called a Kawhi. Anyways, I wanted a Steinway. I ended up getting this budget for a piano, and uh, when I went to go look at them, uh, I was shown this system that I'm about to show you guys, but because I was buying the house, I didn't want to overextend myself and whatever, so I didn't end up buying that piano. So I think this sales guy, uh, not I think, obviously he wants to sell me and upgrade me the piano. I've obviously showed interest. I'm a musician at heart, uh, born and raised, playing guitar and piano and stuff. Whenever we announced the grand opening, I was like, hey, what if we bring a one of the pianos I'm about to show you so that you guys can have it at the grand opening. And I was like, well, that's really cool, but for the grand opening, it might not work because it's gonna be a hybrid indoor-outdoor. And so people walking in, you'll still be able to hear the DJ outside. It might not work and it might not be the best thing. But I was like, if you guys are gonna make the investment to bring it only for the grand opening, what if you guys instead wait till after the grand opening, you deliver it and keep it here through the holidays? The idea we came up with was that since they were gonna make the investment to bring the piano here for the grand opening, instead of just bringing it for the grand opening, that they were gonna bring it here, set it up here, leave it through the holidays, and let, it, let us use it for the purpose that I'm about to show you. So what's really cool is, and I'm not a piano salesman by any chance, but I do love, the, I am a really big fan of this thing. It's really, really cool. So this is a Steinway and Sons piano and for anybody who knows pianos uh, or has ever heard of pianos best pianos in the world there's going to be some argument there there's a couple other brands that people would argue but to me Steinway is the most consistent it's everywhere people know it if you go to most orchestras more or sorry most halls or opera houses or anything it's probably a big chance that there's a Steinway there um, and so a lot of uh, professionals love the Steinways. Uh, what's that? Yeah, it's kind of like the Patek Philippe in watches. And so there might be some better watches out there, but Patek Philippe is Patek Philippe, and it's kind of the same way with Steinway. So uh, anyways, what's really cool about this is it looks like a regular grand piano, but Andrew, can you cue it? Two hours later. So check it. So the conversation we had with Ryan over at Steinway Plano in Dallas is that we could play holiday music on this Steinway in our showroom rather than just playing typical holiday music over the speakers because what's classier, my voice tone has changed even as the music is playing in the background. What's classier than a piano playing in the background as you're shopping for a luxury watch. I can't think of anything more classy than that. So, uh, let me tell you a little bit about this. Can you cut it? So what's cool about this system, guys, is this is a Steinway Spirio. And Spirio is basically the player part. Now, you guys might say player pianos have been around for a long time. And you're right. But what's cool about this system is this is the latest innovation in the player piano world. In a lot of other player pianos, there's really, it's really monotone in the way that a song is played because 
It's a, mecha it's a mechanical system that basically just depresses keys based on what is transcribed. So if it's playing a C note, there's really only like three settings to play in that. There is really loud, medium, and soft. And so when you listen to a song, they're able to articulate and there's like three different settings and it sounds okay. In this system, they've taken it to the next level and it is literally down to like the ounce. If you have a song recorded, so there, there's an iPad that this connects through through Bluetooth. Whenever they uh, made the selection of songs, they hired, a, you know, they, they partnered up with a bunch of different world renowned pianists and professionals and had them record certain songs. And the, the way that this system works is it not only does it record the notes that they're playing, but it records the dynamics, it records the articulation, it really records everything and it transcribes it and puts it into this piano. So they did that so much so to where they're saying that the way it was recorded is the way you're gonna hear it on the piano, down, down to perfection. So that's really cool. Now there's like the record player guys who are like, this is the way that music sounds the best. And that's because of the way it, it was recorded back then. It would really record everything and really put it into the vinyl record. And if you get the right vinyl player, it really sounds like you're there. Well here, it's the actual piano and the system and that professional has recorded the track and the piano plays it exactly like they play it. There's another added feature, which is the most crazy part about this piano. I know I'm going on and on about this piano, but it's so cool. The added feature about this is if you get the specific feature added to your Spirio piano, uh, there's one called the R. So like if you're a pianist and you wanna play something, you can record it. It'll record the way you played it and it'll play it back to you. And you can save that. And so if you're writing music, you can save that. It'll play back to you and it'll always sound the same way that you always played it. If you get that piano, you get the, what's called live streaming. You can get a Spirio and add streaming, or you can get an R that already comes with the streaming. But what that streaming is, is imagine your favorite concert pianist is playing in London, they're playing in Paris, they're playing in New York, and your schedule just doesn't allow you to go. Well, you're gonna watch it on TV. But if you're a snob when it comes to music, you wanna hear it the way it's supposed to, the speakers are never gonna do it justice. So Steinway has made it to where if they're playing, if the concert pianist is playing a Spirio Steinway in the hall, which they're trying to really work with all these concert halls and everybody to replace the pianos with that piano, when they're playing live, it'll stream it to this piano. And so as your pianist in London or in New York or wherever they're at is playing, your piano at home is mimicking exactly what they're playing in real time to you. That is insane. So you're getting the best piano in the world playing itself through the concert pianist remotely. So they're playing it and it's coming through and transcribing itself into your piano. So you get to hear what your pianist, live pianist is playing in your home through the, through the piano. It's the piano, it's not a speaker built into the piano. The actual piano is playing itself. So that's really cool. So. Shout out to Steinway, Plano, Dallas, uh, to the ownership, to Ryan uh, McCabe, who's a sales guy that I've been working with. I hope one day I can get this into my house for my kids, for my family. Uh, for now, we're happy that it's here. Um, maybe we will at some point get one if they cut us a good enough deal, uh, which I know that they're gonna try to do. But this, this piano is just insane, it's really cool. Um, I know that we have a lot of clients that have grand pianos and they knew that, so that's why they put this piano here. So if you're in the market for a grand piano, honestly, I think it doesn't get any better than this. And uh, we've had a lot of good reactions from clients who walk in shopping for a watch and their favorite Christmas uh, carol is playing on this beautiful piano. So go ahead and cue it, Andrew. And um, Sam, I'll leave it up to you to edit it how you want. Can you play? Can I play? I'm not very good, and it's like the one song I know. No, I'm just kidding, but I am going to play the song that I always play. 
I suck. It's been a long time. No, no, no. All right, let's start over. I'm rusty, but no, it's one of my favorite songs, and uh, this piano is way better than I than I am. <laughs> 